I know there are a ton of you out there with questions surrounding the seasonal uniforms. Should you pick any of them up? Should you skip all of them? Which ones should you get? So I want to break it down for you guys as fast as possible in this video. We're going to cover all six of the Halloween seasonal uniforms in depth. But at the beginning of the video, I just wanted to give you the quick breakdown in case you don't have time to watch the whole thing or in case you don't really want to hear the whole thing. You don't want to hear the justification. You just want to see how everything breaks down. So we're going to just use these three categories here because there's only six uniforms. You know, the Halloween seasonals have not been around for very long. Um, keep in mind that these seasonals, again, they're, they're only around for Halloween. So they they opened up like they released like four days ago um, and they're not going to be available uh, after, you know, a, a week and a half from now. So they're, they're only available for like a, a two week or like a 10 day window. And then they're gone for a year, a whole year. Um, and so, yeah, it's likely that some of these characters will be replaced by the time we get to this time, 2025, like if we go do a whole loop around the calendar. Um, but we obviously can't predict that because even a character like Ghost Rider, who is a year old or Black Bolt, who is two years old, are still very good. So they haven't necessarily been replaced. But it's also, keep in mind, it's also been two and a half years since Tier 4 was released. So it's possible that, and, and it get, the likelihood gets higher and higher, uh, that we're eventually going to start to see Tier 5 or, or whatever the next sort of layer of upgrades is for characters that could create sort of a new, quote-unquote, new meta very easily, right? Where a character just has like an extra passive or an extra skill, so then they're just automatically better than these characters. But the way that the list breaks down, okay, looks something like this. And it basically just puts one character in the driver's seat as the Giga Tier God meta, and that's Ghost Rider. You have one character, Black Bolt, who is very good, not meta, but very good. And then you have four supports, uh, and that's basically how it shakes out. All three of the female characters from the Halloween seasonals are supports. That's just straight up the, the, the reality. Uh, and, and then a bomb is the newest one here who is also uh basically strictly a support now in terms of the supports they vary in terms of their quality so uh, if you don't have artifacts it probably shakes out like this if you do have six star version of their artifact because morgan lefay's artifact doesn't support uh allies it's not a support artifact whereas sins is Sins is probably a little bit better um, and then weapon hex is better as a standalone character like she has, she's stronger. She deals more damage than any of these supports. Um, and if you're going to go for a particular type of team, she may shift up here. But this is for the majority of players. It probably shakes out exactly like this, where uh, Ghost Rider is in the meta position, Black Bolt is very good, and then the supports go from left to right like this. So this is what you can basically use to um you know guide yourself and in, in, in to what seasonals you're gonna buy you should pick this one up first then if you still have uh you know resources maybe think about picking up morgan lefay's uh keep in mind that obviously if you're going from here to here to here to here to here down to black bolt uh the three in the middle all cost real money so you're gonna have to spend real money to generate tokens um because it's 30 tokens a pop so you need actually 90 tokens in total to buy out all three now if we dive deeper into what makes these characters so meta, we start with Ghost Rider. His is the easiest to explain because basically it's a combination of his tier two passive, which is still one of the most goaded, ask Miles Morales, where he, he deals, he buffs himself to deal 120% increase damage to villains. That's just that's just too goaded. That's just too goaded. But then you combine that with a fourth skill that has ignore iframe has a hundred percent penetration and then it also has an extra proc you can see there when attacking a villain it has a 150 percent damage proc it does an absolutely obscene amount of damage and it just rips through everyone's ass then you combine that with the immortality artifact which gives him the ability to hang with pvp metas because he does all that insane damage now, he, obviously, he's going to skew his value in PvP towards fighting villains, but it means he can one-shot Thanos, he can one-shot Silver Surfer, he can one-shot pretty much any villain um, who doesn't have immortality gets one-shotted uh, because he's just too, just too strong, right? It's just way, way, way too strong. And then, obviously, in PvE, uh, in PvE content, he just scales bananas, 
right? He has so much damage. Um, he's fun to play. He hits really, really, really hard. And even though, like, like I said, he's a year old, there's no one even close to, to, to touching him, right? He's head and shoulders above almost every universal out there. Even characters, universals that have gotten uh, uniforms and tier fours lately, like Beta, or have gotten un new uniforms like Thor, they still can't really match up to Ghost Rider um, in PVE, and that says nothing of PVP. So, yeah, genuinely one of the few hybrid characters in the game, um, and just so powerful. And the thing is, that the reason why he's so he's such an easy recommendation is because even if a universal hero comes around and yeah it's it's possible for a universal hero to come around and be better than him for pve let's say he'll still have pvp he's still gonna have pvp right and they can't take that away from him and you see how how infrequent infrequently they give iframe ignore they give a hundred percent penetration etc right it's so rare you're never gonna see a character like this again so i i do really like him and i think for that reason his value is just um he has a very large moat around his value where it's difficult to uh, kind of replace him or take that away from him completely. Um, in terms of support, Morgan Le Fay is the best. You just have to basically look at the support abilities. I, I don't actually remember where they are. They're probably all in the uniform itself, but there you go. She gives all universal allies 35% attack, so it's like a leadership. Then she also gives them 35% damage to boss types. That's like a support. So right there, she already has a, a bunch of good stuff. But then on top of that, she also gives Universal Allies debuff cleanse, and it's actually the best debuff cleanse in the game. We don't talk about this a lot, and she's actually not used a lot for uh, PvP because she doesn't do a bunch of damage. Uh, but she has revive, keep that in mind. But 10 seconds of debuff with an 18, 18 second cooldown is one of the best. It's like it's the best ratio in the game, right? Uh, Wasp is, is usually quoted as the best because it's 10 seconds of debuff cleanse with a 20 second cooldown, I believe. But this is actually the best one where it's 10 seconds of cleanse with an 18 second cooldown. So your window, right, you spend less than 50% of the time without debuff cleanse, which is super duper powerful. There are individual characters like I think Cap uh, has a six second cleanse every 10 seconds. There are individual characters who can cleanse themselves more frequently. But in terms of giving all allies of a certain type uh, cleansing, she's among the best. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, they didn't really tap into any of the rest of her value. She does have revive. Um, but yeah, for her to really take the next step, she would have to get a tier four in order to be relevant for PvP because her artifact is not that good. It just deals more damage to enemies below 50% uh, HP, which just doesn't really do much because she doesn't hit very hard. Uh, but she does have revive. So she's she's just, you know... I guess you could say she's a tier four away, or maybe she's a, another uniform away, but then that uniform might not have any of those support abilities that are so juicy. As for Sin, again, uh, strong, like decent character on her own, probably a little bit stronger than Morgan Le Fay on her own as a damage dealer, but it's really the support buffs that you want to get her for. To supervillain allies, she gives 55 increased damage to boss types, which is obviously a lot higher than Morgan's 35. It's almost double. Um, but then she doesn't have the increased basic damage. She does have an attack lead, and then she does also get access to an artifact. So she's a little bit harder to build. It's not just a uniform. You, you do need to get the uh, artifact as well if you want to make the most value out of it. But then the artifact gives, um, in a four-star version, it gives 9% increased damage to heroes and villains, plus a instinct scaling based on the character that you're buffing. And I believe it goes all the way up to 15% when you have the artifact six-star. So, yeah, 15% with a 0.5 scaling. So this can go up to, like, I think 30% increased damage to heroes and villains. So she's basically two support characters in one with a decent um, leadership with that 24%. But it, she's definitely the more expensive support to build because you need that artifact to really make it work. Although it's only been a few days of testing, Abomination is clearly a better support now than he was before. The Tier 3 gives him more access to content to be buffing. Um, but really it's about the new uniform, uh, providing an additional buff, uh, that, you know, scales that increased damage to villains and heroes and basically just allows Hulk to do more damage. But in terms of value, this is probably the least valuable seasonal uniform because it's only buffing Hulk. Realistically, you're not going to use She-Hulk, Red Hulk, Red She-Hulk, or Amadeus Cho in any content. So Abomination for now, anyways, 
So Abomination is strictly buffing Hulk, like the, the regular Hulk, the Titan Hulk. Keep in mind that Red Hulk is going to be getting something, at least a tier 3 and a new uniform for the Brave New World Captain Falcon movie. So if you are interested in making that character really strong, this one right here, if you're interested in making him very, very strong, then you're probably going to want to pick up Abomination's uniform because, it, again, it'll be gone in less than two weeks, and then it won't be around in March of next year when he gets a Tier 3 or a Tier 4 and a new uniform for the Harrison Ford Red Hulk version, right? So you can plan ahead if that's something that you're really interested in. I'm not saying that you should do that. I'm just saying that if, you know, you don't see a lot of value because you, you don't really care about Hulk personally, but you really like Red Hulk, then you're going to want to build Abomination, like pick up Abomination's um, uniform because uh, it, uh, you know, is going to buff him. And for sure, the devs are going to take this Abomination into consideration when they're uh, designing this new Red Hulk so that there is synergy so that he can buff this new um, Red Hulk. But yeah, keep in mind, he's one of the more expensive ones because you have to buy him uh, for his crystal cost. Is he worth it? Again, uh, not really for most players. Um, only if you're really interested in buffing Hulk and then the possibility of Red Hulk. But uh, again, you have to consider the value there and make sure you have all of the other, you know, good supports for those characters, particularly for Hulk in ABX, ABL. If you don't have M'Baku, if you don't have um, these other supports, then they might be better suited for you to build first ahead of Abomination just because... You know he's so expensive by comparison and then weapon hex is probably the most interesting support of the halloween ones because she has clearly has value for zombie allies specifically she has the debuff cleanse and she has the increased damage to heroes and villains so in a way weapon hex is like morgan Le Fay for universals but the difference here is rather than applying to a whole typing of universals she only applies to basically captain america wong falcon Doctor Strange. She applies, and herself, obviously. She applies to a very small substate of characters for now. We may see more uh, zombies in the future. I've had people ask me this question. I don't think they're going to release more zombies in the next like six months. They'll probably wait until next Halloween and then they'll probably release more zombies to build up this synergy so that there are more uh, zombie tag, zombie ability characters. But for the time being, this is all we have. Um, and it's possibly worth it, but you have to consider their you know the group value so if you're not going to invest in any other zombies except for weapon hex then you probably don't need this uniform at all unless you really really like weapon hex if you really like weapon hex and particularly if you really like x23 because they're basically the same thing right um and you were disappointed with x23's uniform like a lot of people were uh then you can consider um weapon hex as an alternative to to the real laura because the real Laura kind of sucks in this game. And unfortunately, she didn't get a seasonal paywall uniform, so she kind of sucks. And on the other hand, Weapon Hex doesn't suck. She has a better heal. She's way tankier, like she's super tanky. She hits harder in PvE content on her own. She's proc friendly. She has like 120 hits on her base rotation, which is insane. Um, and then she has these crazy buffs for uh, zombie types, not to mention the Berserker passive, brand new ability that gives all zombies immortality it kills them afterwards it's not quite as strong as immortality because it does kill them afterwards but it does give them immortality so a very cheap way to uh, enable the zombie pvp synergy you don't need an artifact you don't need some newfangled thing whatever you just need this uniform that being said Again, uh, if you really like Weapon Hex, I would pick up this uniform. Obviously, consider Tier 4-ing her. If you already have Tier 4 Zombie Cap, if you already have Tier 4 Zombie Wong, and you really enjoy using them in PvP, this is a no-brainer. For the rest of the players who don't have any of the things I just mentioned, you can probably skip this uniform. Unless the idea, the thought of building up your zombie roster, if that's really exciting to you, and you then you have a lot of options. You have Doctor, you have like actual meta characters, Doctor Strange, Cap... And then you have, to a lesser extent, Wong and now Weapon Hex that you can actually build a somewhat meta PvP team around. So, And then finally, we have Black Bolt. Um, on my personal bias side, I do really enjoy this character and I still like playing him. But I can totally recognize when I look at him objectively and I put this objective stuff aside that he's not really meta anymore. And although he's a villain and not a hero with this uniform, 
the best way to understand how he's not meta is to compare him to the other universal male uh, ghost rider and when you do that you can see how head and shoulders above ghost rider is uh, above black bolt it's just night and day like you cannot really compete black bolt has no business competing with ghost rider in pvp and he also has no business competing with him in pve really the only way the only place that black bolt uh still has like a lot of value is if you need a universal villain male now if you go and filter by universal villain male you can see yeah your choices are quite limited you have a bunch of native tier two and native tier threes who are obviously super expensive you have epic quest characters like molecule man and dr doom you have world boss characters like thanos and then really the only character in terms of cost that's going to be anywhere near black bolt is loki right at the current time unless they give like thane or ultron or, or anti-man a tier four at the only at this time the only one that comes close in terms of value is obviously uh loki however for those of you that don't know loki is very very difficult to play he al he also only has value in one piece of content which is abx abl so that's uh you know that basically is the breakdown for you if you really need a universal male villain for abx abl and your options are black bolt and loki loki can perform better overall than black bolt but he requires a heavier build a more expensive build like he needs a brilliant rage and he's also harder to play black bolt doesn't require as heavy of a build doesn't require as expensive as a build isn't going to score as high but is also much more consistent in scoring and is way easier and more fun to play so unfortunately black bolt he gets kind of this award of like uh the least stinky cheese it's still a stinky cheese in the sense of like he's not that meta but he's also the least stinky cheese because he's really easy and really fun to play now does that make him meta no it doesn't that's just my opinion um but that's kind of the breakdown that you should understand uh if you're playing this game just for fun and you want black bolt to be strong it's a great uniform to pick up if you're looking to chase the meta you should probably skip this uniform also keep in mind that despite being a universal male villain because he has the inhuman ability like the allies tag the, the he's inhuman right he's not a mutant he's not a uh, human he's not other he's not available for very many world boss stages so he's not going to help you climb uh nearly as much like basically it's night and day between the stages that he can do and the stages that ghost rider can do again another reason why uh, when you compare the two ghost rider is just the runaway winner so hopefully that has helped you with the seasonal uniform breakdown i'll have videos coming very very soon uh specifically reviewing weapon hex and abomination because i know you guys want to see that but i just wanted to do an overview of all of them so that i can answer any of those lingering questions and so that hopefully you can enjoy this halloween update by picking up the the seasonal that you want the most and then uh you know blasting off with that one so yeah hit me in the comments down below let me know what you think thank you so much for watching smash the like button if you enjoy the content uh, content happy halloween i know i'm a day late and i'll see you in the next one take care